In this video, we're going to look at a problem that deals with the quotient topology. So here's the setup. You've got two topological spaces. One's name is x and one's name is y. And just to keep track of the topologies on each one, I'm going to say the topology on x, I'm going to denote it by tx. It looks like a tau, sorry. I'm going to call it t in this video. So the topology on x is tx and the topology on y is ty. So those are my topological spaces. I've got a function f from x to y, so the domain is x and the uh, codomain is y. Let's say it's onto, so in fact the range is y. And let's let fancy u be the quotient topology on y that's induced by f. And I'll tell you what that means in a minute. So what we're asked to do is prove that if my function f is continuous and closed, then the quotient topology u has to be equal to whatever the topology on y was. Okay, so let's talk about some facts and some definitions in case you know, having trouble keeping track of some of the stuff in your topology class that you're taking. The first thing, u. Remember above, I said u is gonna denote the quotient topology. So what on earth is that? So it's gonna be the set of, and how you should read this, it's all subsets of y. So use an element to the power set of y. So any subset of y such that the pre-image of u, that's that f inverse notation, or the inverse image, whatever you like to say. I'm going to say pre-image. So the pre-image of u is in the topology on x. So in other words, I'm going to take all subsets of y whose pre-image is open in x. And I'm going to say that is an open set in y. And again, all subsets of y whose pre-image is open in x is how I want you to think about what that set is. So that's the definition of the quotient topology. And that's what I mean by what I'm gonna call open and Y. Well, it depends on F, right? So that's what I meant above when I say the quotient topology U is induced by F, right? F determines what are the open sets in Y. All right, second thing, continuous, which should be a little bit more familiar to you. It says that for each open set in Y, so for each U in the topology on Y, I need to know that the pre-image is in the topology in X. So in other words, if U is open in Y, then its pre-image is open in X. I think one and two are the most easily like uh, confused facts. So take a minute, stare at them, try to notice how they're subtly different in a way. Okie dokie. Number three, what's it mean for a function to be closed, right? I said that this function is continuous and closed, but I, mean, I know what a closed set is. It's a complement of an open set. What's a closed function? So a function f from x to y is closed. That tells me that if you take a closed set of the domain, so if c is closed in x, then its image, f of c, is closed in y. So in other words, to say that the function's closed, you kind of think of it as f preserves closed sets. All right, so let's get into the proof again. And so what are we trying to do one more time? We're trying to show that if my function f is onto and it's continuous and it's closed, then the topology on y has to be the quotient topology that f induces. Okay, so let's get to it. So the first thing we're gonna do, what are we trying to do? We're gonna try and show that ty is the same thing as u. So in like kind of a basic proofs class, first thing I'm gonna do is show you that ty is a subset of u. Later on, I'm gonna to try to show you that u is a subset of ty. So the game plan, that's the game plan. And at the end, if I've got both of those two set relationships, then the two sets are equal. So that's what we're gonna try. So let's first show this. So in order to show it, let's take an element of the left side. So let's say u is in the topology on y, so ty. All right, so again, I'm saying u is open in y, cool. Now f's continuous, so that tells me that the pre-image of u is gonna be open in x. So by one above, that tells me then, okay, the pre-image of u is open, that means that u has to be in the quotient topology. So if you go up and look here, what's the quotient topology? Quotient topology is any subset of y whose pre-image is open in x. So u is a perfectly good example of such a set. So u is in the, it, u is in fancy u, is what I'm gonna say. So u is in the quotient topology. Cool, and so we've got the first inclusion that we are looking for, thus the topology on y is contained in the quotient topology. What's well, a little bit harder so that's always true, right? I didn't use anything about I didn't use anything about uh, the function being onto or the function being closed. Like continuity was all I needed for that first direction. But if I move to the next direction to try to show that the quotient topology is contained in Ty, this is where we're going to need those extra hypotheses. So this is the one that's uh, again is, is not necessarily true in general, or not necessarily true just depending on continuity. All right, same game plan though. Let's take an element of fancy u. So let's say regular u is in the quotient topology. 
So by one above, right, just by definition of the quotient topology, to say that u is in the quotient topology on y, that just means that its pre-image is open in x. Cool. And so again, so its pre-image is open in x. I just said that. And that means that its complement is closed in x, right? So the pre-image of an, I'm sorry, the complement of an open is closed. And so I'm denoting complement of a set, like set complement, by this x minus. So think of that as like set minus. So again, uh, this right here, right where, what am I pointing to? This denotes the complement of f inverse of u, or the complement of the pre-image of u. Okay. Now f is a closed map. Remember that means that f preserves closed sets. So what if I plug this set into f and think about what's the image of that set? What does f do to it? What's it send it to? I don't know exactly what it sends it to, but when I plug it in, I can tell you that it, whatever it goes to, it's closed. So the image of the complement, the pre-image of u, is closed in y. All right. So if it's closed in y, remember that means that uh, um, the complement is open. So the complement of this set is open in ty. Or I'm sorry. Well, the complement of this set is in ty. In other words, the complement of this set um, is open in y. So again, in ty and open in y, those are two different ways to say the same thing. All right, so here is where we're going to use the fact that we're surjective in order to kind of finish this off. So it was very important for me to say that, okay, I've got a closed set here, and what I'm gonna do pretty soon is think about its complement. Now, surjectivity allows me to say allows me to write this image in another way, vastly simplifies it. This image that I have written down, it's actually equal to just the complement of u. So it's just y minus u. And uh, so surjectivity of f, it ensures a few things. And so I think we're gonna break down why this is true a little bit more. That's what I think we're planning to do, if I remember how this goes. So surjectivity of f, it ensures a few things. So here's some kind of basic set theory stuff about surjective functions between two sets. So nothing topological at all, this is just set theory, function between two sets. So if my function f is surjective, if you took any subset of the domain, any subset of the domain, so a is, is a subset of x, and you look at the image of the complement of a, that should be complement of the image of a. So surjectivity kind of guarantees uh, that intuitiveness or this Kind of intuitive equation that you kind of hope would happen all the time for functions f but it turns out you know surjective functions are the ones that guarantee it all the time the second thing that uh, i can say if i know that f's a surjective function is if you took any subset of the codomain so in our case since it's surjective any subset of the range um, what if you looked at the image of the pre-image of b that should just be b and again this is this equality is is uh, you're only guaranteed that equality when the function's surjective. Perfect. And so we're going to apply one and two here in order to try to just justify why can I say that the image of the complement of the pre-image of u is equal to just the complement of u. So let's let's kind of break this apart. So the image of the complement of the pre-image of u that should be the same thing as the complement of the image of the pre-image of u, and that's using, let me scroll up a little bit, that's just using fact one here, right? I've got, here's my a, it's a subset of the domain, so the image of the complement of a is equal to the complement of the image, and that's the complement of the image right there. Okie dokie. And the second thing we're gonna do now is, well, what's a way that I could rewrite this? And you kind of say, hey, this looks an awful lot like this situation where I've got some subset of y now. So that allows me to say, fact two here allows me to say that the image of the pre-image of u, it's just u, right? It simplifies perfectly to what we want it to be. And that's again, fact two up here. Cool. And so what's that tell me then? That tells me that the complement of u is a closed set in y, right? We already talked about, since f is a closed map, I know that this is closed. That's the same thing as y minus u, so y minus u is closed. All right, that's perfect because we know that, uh, okay, if y minus u is closed, then its complement, being u, is open. And so u is an element of the topology on y. And so what did we do? We started with u in the quotient topology, fancy green u up there, 
And we have just tracked through an argument in order to show that uh, u is actually a member of the topology on y. So that finishes up that the quotient topology is contained in the topology that was on y. And if I put all my facts together so far, you know, I, I've obtained both of the uh, um, set inclusions here that I need in order to say that these two topologies are actually equal.